lots of folks. Yeah, we're up to 12 in the group. Um, we just posted a little, um, <clears throat> uh, we just posted a, um, a little reminder for everyone to show up and we're letting everyone in here. We got some good news. We got some really exciting news um, to share today. We've got one of our top producers and ALC members on the call today too. And she may or may not be part of the surprise. So I wanted to uh, make sure you guys stick around to the end. Okay, who wants to share? Uh, let's do two people sharing some awesome news from the weekend. Did anyone have any uh, cool Mother's Day experiences? Anyone sign some paperwork? Who wants to share? Yes, I saw today. Um, oh, this is music to my ears. Everyone talking <laughs> over each other. This is beautiful. Uh, Mary, why don't you start? So my uh, seller that I sold her house across the street from me, uh, we signed contract on Saturday for a new build. And she's super excited, brought her in under budget. And she's very, very excited um building a home in the uh 55 and older community and cool. it is um hm homes that are building it in braden park um she's extremely yeah. excited it was funny when we were sitting there talking picking out everything in the house uh she said you know i'd really like to have the my bedroom a, a gray almost a hue of, of lavender because um matches my comforter and all my stuff and so I called her back and it sat on my mind and sat on my mind. And so Saturday night, I said, happy Mother's Day. I will be painting your room for you when you get your new house. Because I'm an excellent painter. Wow. Now, uh, this, is the, this is the lady that I helped move, Bill. <laughs> so <laughs> now I'm helping her in her new house. I'm going to paint uh, her bedroom. I don't know that I'll be able to have this type of customer service always. Hopefully I'll be so busy at some point that I'll have to hire people <laughs> to do these things. <laughs> but she I, definitely was extremely impressed uh, that I, I um, told her that I would paint her, her new bedroom after we closed on the house. I love that. And then we're still in negotiation with the deal with Greta. So the other one fell through. And so Greta and I are stepped back up to the table and we're negotiating. So hopefully... Prayers, everyone. Hopefully, Greta will get this house All right. by me. Prayers, everybody. <laughs> um, one thing I love about what you said <clears throat> is um, you're surprising and delighting, right? You're doing things that are a little beyond what uh, this this person is probably expecting, of you. <laughs> and you're doing it in a in a very personalized way. You're not just like giving a big Amazon gift card, right? You're you're doing something that is personalized to something that she shared with you. And not only did she feel comfortable sharing it with you, but you were paying attention and you remembered it and you were listening and then you did something about it. Yes, um, and, I, and I told her, Bill, I said, I think, I think that um, your time is the best gift that you can give to anybody because that's the only thing that we can't replace, right? Is our time. Love that. That is and, exactly right. Yeah. That is exactly right. And then I, I believe at some point her boyfriend will be moving in with her. And she said, if that happens, I will be selling their, his cob house. <laughs> Cop can. Very nice. Very nice. Congratulations. What what a weekend. What a weekend. Okay, let's do one more. Who else wants to share some positive news today? I have something. Great. All right, great. Ebony, go ahead. So I am in love with this PC group. I needed help with the contract over the weekend, and I reached out to four agents. All four of them picked up the phone, gave me great advice and helped me write a really, really good contract. So I'm hoping, fingers are crossed, that I win it. Um, I'll know later on today. And in addition to that, something complete, a little bit different. I've been dying to see a home in the country club of the South. My kid was invited to a party there. So I'm like, okay, well, let me take a, you know, let me take this opportunity to see what's, you know, over there. So when I came to the party, I, before I came to the party, I got flowers for all of the mothers because I wanted to stand out just like, Hey, it's yeah. mother's day. <laughs> so I came with flowers for all of the mothers there. The mothers loved me. The house was amazing there. Um, and it was the first time me meeting those parents. So I looked at that as a plus exchanged information. So I am hoping to build that relationship. So it's a great weekend. Mm -hmm. that, that is awesome. Yeah, I, there's like 10 different things in which you said that are awesome. 
Um, great job. Surprising and delighting again. Guys, surprising and delighting is not only beneficial to the person that you're surprising and delighting, but it makes you feel good, does it not? All right, man, great stuff, great stuff. Congratulations, you guys. Okay, I wanna share, um, just I wanna remind you about uh, some goals and I wanna remind you about Bold Local and then we're gonna let the star of the show take over. So um, as we know, uh, Bold is starting the week of June 7th. So we are doing Bold on Thursdays this, this time. Um, it is a completely different Bold experience than you have done either in person or um, Bold October or Bold um, uh, uh, Bold uh, Pivot. So this is a completely different system. They've been beta testing it in Austin for a couple of months and we are participating starting on June the 10th. So it is gonna be June the 10th. That's a Thursday, nine to 12. And then that is the first of six sessions that will all be consecutive, six consecutive Thursdays, all from nine to 12. So we will be having some uh, giveaways from the Market Center. Um, we are working on some additional sponsorships. And the cool news is, is the Productivity Group is going to do a, uh, a, an award as well, or, or a gift as well. We're definitely gonna be giving away one ticket. Bold Local, I think is $3.99. We're gonna be giving away one ticket for sure, and maybe some additional ones, and maybe some smaller prizes as well. And here, how, here is the way that this is going to work. And I'll post this here in just a second. So it's gonna be based on the point system. Okay, and we're gonna create a leaderboard. Um, you will get one point for every contact that you make in the month of May, including what you're gonna post yesterday, okay? Uh, one point for every contact, uh, two points for every appointment held, three points for every a, a listing taken, buyer or seller, okay? Four points, and I'm intentionally rewarding this behavior, four points for every person that you add to the database, and five points for every person that you add to the pipeline, okay? One contact, two appointment held, three listing taken, four database add, five for people that you add to the pipeline. And we'll have a, a running leaderboard and the winner will receive a free ticket on us for um, Bold Local, okay? Don't forget, um, I wanna share our goals. So we're kind of chasing this stuff as a team, okay? Each month, our forecast was that the group was gonna grow, of course, right? And get more and more productive. So the goal for May is to go on 100 listing appointments buyer or seller, 100 appointments. We got 80 people in the group, 100 appointments. This should easily be able to happen, okay? 100 appointments and 63 of those we will take. We will get 63 individuals to commit to us exclusively to help them find a home as a buyer or sell their home as a seller, cool? So 100 listing appointments, 63 listings taken, okay? So, and there'll probably be a couple of secondary prizes like I mentioned. So please make sure that you clear your calendar starting the uh, 10th of June for six weeks. It is not going to be like the typical first step of bold of, of years past where it basically is a seven hour sales pitch. That is not happening, okay? So come in, are you, are you kind of flexing Donna? Are you showing us your strength? Donna's gonna win? Love it, love it. Okay. Um, you guys want to hear a little bit about taking responsibility? I was just, I, I, I'm going to share just for two or three minutes um, some information that I caught from Ben Kinney's, um, uh, what do you call it, podcast. Ben Kinney is the number one agent in all of Keller Williams, okay? He's from Bellingham, Washington. He owns like 10 or 12 market centers and a uh, number of tech companies, and uh, he's got a ton of expansion teams. He's just an, an insanely bright, insanely talented um, uh, leader. He is fantastic. He runs a, a podcast called Win, Make, Give. Win, Make, Give. I'll, I'll put the link in the chat here shortly. Okay. And one of the um, topics that he covered I listened to this morning was about taking responsibility. I just want to share a couple of the um, ways that you begin to take responsibility. Okay. The first thing is um, we are going to resist the temptation to blame others. We're gonna resist the temptation to blame others, okay? What that means is 
We don't say, oh, well, it's the buyer's fault or the seller's fault or the other agent or something like that, okay? There's some things we can't control, but it, it, blaming somebody else doesn't serve our long-term purpose, okay? Secondly, we are going to, um, I'm sorry, hang on. We are going to stop making excuses. No excuses. If you were late, you were late. No need to blame it on the, the traffic. It's the same damn traffic every day. Okay, if you were late, it was a decision that you made or a decision you did not make that caused you to be late. So let's just take responsibility for it. Okay, the um, second or the third thing, I'm sorry, is we are going to get clarity on where we're going. Okay, that comes from having our big rocks, right? It, maybe it's a number of families that we want to help each year. Maybe it's a number of contacts we want to make every day. Maybe it's a certain number of appointments we want to go on. Maybe it's uh, the vacation that we're going to buy our family when we hit the goals, right? We have clarity on where we're going. And that begs the question of where's our plan, right? Do we have a plan? Okay. The next thing is we are going to stop complaining about the journey. We're on the journey. It's important to us. So yes, it's hard. As many of you know, I am I have a personal trainer right now and he kicks my ass every day and I complain about it a lot of times. That's not serving me, okay? So I'm taking responsibility too. I chose this, I, I'm bringing it into my world and it's for a particular reason and that's why it's happening, okay? The next thing is I'm going to make public commitments, okay? It's easy to fall off the bandwagon if no one knows you're trying to do something, okay? That's not the case here. So if you have something that's super meaningful to you that you wanna take responsibility of, let somebody know, let us know. We're your support team, right? We're your peer group and we wanna see each other win, all right? Next, we gotta create habits. Get rid of the old ones, start some new ones, okay? If we lack account or if the way to lack accountability is to lack accounting, right? If you want accountability, you need to account. That's the whole idea, right? Accounting is reporting the numbers. It's, it's checking in. It's having a weekly session with ourselves to say, what did we do last week? And it did, it did it create the results we were aiming for, right? And the, the final thing is, um, oh, I'm sorry, I skipped one. We need to acknowledge where we are right? We need to say to ourselves, hey, we're 20 pounds overweight, or hey, we don't have dinner enough with our family, or hey, we haven't had a date night in six years, right? Let's acknowledge where we are, and let's see if there, is there anybody around us that is living in a way that looks like we want to live that way, right? Let's, let's, let's look for models, right? That's what coaching is all about, right? Just to say, hey, I want more uh, listings from for sale by owners, is there anybody who is successful at that? Let me go get into a relationship with that type of person and start to do the stuff that they did, right? And the final step is to take the first step, right? To get into action, to get into action. Okay, any questions on that? Any ahas? Anyone wanna share anything? I will give Ben Kinney a shout out. If you guys do not know who Ben Kinney is and have never heard him speak, life-changing. He's the most down-to-earth person in the company. And I know that's a grand sweeping statement, but would you agree, Bill? He's the most down-to-earth person in the company. <laughs> yes, he is. Um, unassuming. When you, sound, when you say down-to-earth, the first thing I think about is being humble. Yeah, he's unassuming. He's approachable. He's not flashy. He's, he's not, a, I don't know that he's a high eye. I don't know, but he's amazing. And I saw him first or learned of who he was first at family reunion. And he, he changed my business completely. He made me look at things so differently. So I hope you guys know who he is. If you don't, you'll find out today. You'll go yeah. out, you'll seek out, seek it out and find out today. Seek knowledge. That's another part of his establishing a uh, responsibility. Thank you, Michelle. Yeah. Okay. Um, does anyone recognize anyone that they haven't seen in here in a little while? I, well, she's in the upper left-hand corner of my screen, so maybe she's in the upper left-hand corner of everyone's screen. I just wanted to um, welcome Michelle Slater to the group today. Um, 
We've got a couple of uh, pieces of exciting news. Michelle, should we wait till the end to share that and let them get to know you a little bit first? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think so too. <laughs> All right, beautiful. So you have a story that um, that I just love. Um, I'm hoping you can share it, share it with us. And um, I just want to uh, introduce you guys to Michelle. I'll, I'll give you like a, can I, can I give like a 10 second introduction? Sure, it'll be shorter can... than mine. That'll be good. What's that? It'll be shorter than mine. That'll be good. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Michelle is the Productivity Committee uh, Chair of the Agent Leadership Council. For those that you do not know, the Agent Leadership Council is essentially the board of directors of the office. So each fall, um, we look to see who are the 20%, top 20% agents in the office. And the top 20% uh, is notified that they are eligible for the ALC, the Agent Leadership Council. Um, that is um, uh, uh, selected by the team leader, where we send out the invitations to all the 20% and let them know they're eligible and ask them to apply to be on the Agent Leadership Council. Then the team leader goes through and uh, through a series of interviews, um, identifies who those uh, agents will be. There's generally around 10 or so agents on the ALC. And those agents run committees of productivity, um, which is what Michelle is, growth, uh, technology, and culture slash social. And then this year, as many of us know, we added a social equity um, uh, chairperson as well. So those are the five, uh, five titles. Michelle runs the uh, prop, uh, productivity one. Now I wanna tell you something about Michelle. Michelle sent me an email three or four years ago. It says, hey, I'm Michelle. I, I'm in uh, the Sandy Springs uh, Keller Williams office and um, I want to come up to Roswell. So let's chat, right? So we have a conversation. She basically tells me that she's been at that market center for over a year and a half and has not had a single closing yet. Okay, no closings. Is that right? Yep. No closings. So first of all, it takes a lot of patience to wake up every day and do our things and not have closings. Would you agree? Yeah, and a supportive husband or Thank spouse. Thank God you have a supportive friend, husband. Or something, you know, somebody who's not like, what the hell are you doing? Right. Enough, you know, with, this, like, enough with this hobby thing. Come on, go get a job, right? Thank God you didn't have that that thing and that stuff in your life, right? Right. So um, she comes to me and she ultimately comes on board. And I, I have to go back and look at the dates of this. I, I, I think I should, but basically I feel like it was almost immediately, probably within a month or so, you wrote me a letter that says, I will be on the ALC next year. <laughs> and I want you to watch over me to make sure I'm doing what I should be doing to get on the ALC, right? Okay. And I was like, this, this woman's pretty cool. I think I like her, right? She's got some big goals. And yeah. sure enough, you're on the ALC. Um, um, very shortly after you came to Roswell, um, you engaged in productivity coaching. So I want to chat for a second about that. And um, ultimately, uh, capped in like a couple of weeks. And now you are the Michelle Slater that we all know and love. So um, <laughs> let's start with how did you walk us back through that year and a half? How, how, did, you, how did you come out of that the way you came out? I mean, I think I had hope because I came from, um, my professional career was in retail management and I had three small children. My youngest at the time was four, my oldest was nine. And what I knew was if I didn't make it in real estate, I was going to have to probably go back to retail management. And that was a non-negotiable for me because I, did, I knew that wasn't gonna be a work-life balance with my children. I knew that at my age, I wasn't um, physically going to be able to keep that job up. I had kind of capped where I was. So it was really a matter of do or die to, to stay in real estate. And I knew that I loved everything about it and that it was the right trajectory for me. So it was just a matter of, I got to stick with it. Honestly, too, I was having a lot of fun. I mean, it was fun after being a stay-at-home mom for so many years to get dressed every day and go somewhere and be with adults who were like me, who were outgoing and and you know charismatic and and had an eagerness to learn and you know going to family reunion and classes and mega camp it was a lot of fun so i think time slipped away kind of enjoying myself and um walk us through like the when did you realize you needed a change 
Yeah, so I went to family reunion. It was my one year anniversary with the company and I went to family reunion and um, I, I saw Ben Kinney there. It's funny so much that you brought that up today. Well, first of all, seeing Gary Keller on stage and realizing how this one person has managed to manifest such a large culture. And you really will see that when you see him in person. I'm not giving him more credit than he deserves. It's, there's a feeling. And I saw Ben Kinney and I took various classes. And so, yeah, when I got back and I had a ton of fun. But when you, I, was that the one where um, Gary interviewed Ben alone on stage? No, I didn't see that one. Okay, go ahead. I think, I think this was the year they announced that Command was coming. Okay, okay. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, I got back and I realized, like, I've got to do something different. I can't keep doing the same thing and expect the same results. I've got to do something different. And guys, like my best friend in real estate, we had an office together at, at the um, Sandy Springs office. I didn't even tell her. I just knew in my gut, like, I've got to make a change and I can't really talk about it with anyone. I just need to do it. And yeah, so I called Bill. I lived in Roswell. And I, I thought, well, that's the change I need to make to start with is I need an office that I can come to every day. I'll, there were no offices at the first Atlanta building and there was like a five-year waiting list. And <laughs> now I remember you're like, I'm not coming unless I can have an office. Yeah, that was the stipulation. And I felt like I needed to, you know, have more of a work-life balance and stay kind of in the community that I serve or want to intended to serve. And so, yeah, I called Bill and said, do you have an office with a window? And he said, yes, we do. And I said, well, I want to come to your office. And you were like, we need to come and, you know, we need to like have a formal sit down and all that. <laughs> we did. And then the rest is kind of history. Beautiful. Walk us through um, your engagement with productivity coaching when you came to the market center. Yeah. So I came to the market center in March and I didn't start productivity coaching until June. And I look back at that now and I laugh because you know, all the people that were succeeding were in productivity coaching. But what I know now is I didn't want that accountability. I didn't want to be somewhere every day at 9 a.m., right? Most of us get into this business because we don't want to answer to anybody. Well, guess what? <laughs> you won't have a business if you don't answer to somebody, honestly, yourself, your spouse, your clients. So, you know, I, I saw that results were happening, but it was also scary at the same time, because I knew it was going to be a commitment. I would have to be at the office every day. You guys are so fortunate. All you got to do maybe is get up from one room and go to the other. You know, I had to get up and get dressed and actually drive into the office. And we had to be on time. If we weren't on time, we didn't get in and, you know, all those things. So uh, once I committed to it, um, then, you know, it was, hard, you, you know, I was, I was fully committed and, right. What, what happened was being around other agents who were succeeding, emulating the behaviors that successful agents were conducting, um, getting uncomfortable, doing things that made me uncomfortable, it all transpired into mindset shift. I mean, I had a couple of breakdowns, like crying, and I, I don't cry, like I'm not a, like I had a couple of breakdowns and then finally a breakthrough. Yep. And by that fall, I had three closings. And then my third year, I had 16 closings. And then this year, I'm on track to close 40. That's amazing. Yeah. One yeah. thing I, 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 maybe this is just in my mind, you can, you can tell me whether I'm right or not. But one thing I feel like you started to commit to is um, the seeking knowledge, right? Cool. Reading books, studying right? It's doing the things that, you know, a lot of people like nobody, there's no TV shows about that, right? The, 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 the um, million dollar listings and all that stuff online, they don't talk about um, what the agent does to make themselves smarter and more inspired, more driven. Um, that's one thing I've always, I've, I've, I've associated with you is just your, your willingness and your desire to go out and kind of seek knowledge from the best of the best. Is that Am I, I'm not off base there, right? No, not at all. And, you know, I don't know what you guys have in place right now, but the PC program we were in when you were team leader, so you remember it very well, Bill, was that um, we were required, if you will, to read one to two books a month. And, and you couldn't help but to do it. It wasn't like college where it was like, oh, I got to read a book. 
because everyone was reading it and everyone was talking about it in your group and there you were seeing results off of what they were reading and everyone kept referring to it. If you didn't read it, you were like left out. You know what I mean? You were like, I don't know what they're talking about. I, what's happening, you know? So reading, immersing yourself in books, the right books. And I say immersing yourself. I don't mean reading, taking 18 months to read the MRA. I mean, reading the MRA in a month and then the next month reading Atomic Habits and 1,000 successful, 1,000 things successful people do. Reading two books because it's like a workout. When you work out Monday, Wednesday, Friday, your body really grows. Where if you just work out every Monday, mm, not so much. You gotta, um, we immersed ourselves in books and then we put into place the 411 and um, script practicing every morning, making calls every morning and turning in our 411 in our calendar every Sunday night. Yeah. And again, you know, we're all adults. So it wasn't like, hey, you failed and you're thrown out of PC if you don't turn it in. But again, when nine out of 10 people are turning their in and you're not um, that type of, you know, you know, embarrassment, you know, causes you to rise up and do the adult thing and, and turn your shit in. <laughs> Sorry, but that's just get right to the point. No, yeah. you're I've let one or two fly in here, right? I mean, right. why would you sign up for something and then not do it all the way? What's the point in that? That's like making a cake and like, well, I don't really need baking soda in this. You know, it says I'm supposed to put baking soda in it, but it'll be fine. And then expecting the cake to turn out the way it is in the picture. Like, why would you sign up for PC and then not do all the activities that they're telling you to do? That's right. What do you think about... Um, how has your business changed when you started to like really hold yourself accountable and take, well, take kind of, of all, note of where you were and where you were not? So I wrote this down. Um, begin, begin, begin to, um, it's hard to explain. Let's see, begin to, to create a business so that you will have a business. So what that means is Doing the 411 every Sunday night is, is figuring out what's important, um, you know, double checking it. And we're, we're going to talk more about the 411 for anybody who's like, what the hell is she talking about? Um, you know, it's you're creating the business using these tools. And then what happens is it creates business. And, and that's kind of hard to explain. Um, I guess what I mean is when you start to, when you plan to lead gen every morning from 11, nine to 12, and you plan to see houses every day from one to three, and you plan to take appointments every day from three to five, whether you have any houses to see or not, and whether you have any appointments to take or not, what's funny is when you plan for it, it suddenly will begin to show up and you suddenly have a business because you are treating it like a business. And Before that, it's just you really are, you're willing to hold your, you're willing to be both the supervisor and the, the worker simultaneously, right? right? I spoke to several agents last week that one of their biggest challenges is they worked really well. They had great success when they were working for someone. Mm -hmm. And now that they're working for themselves, they're struggling. Yeah. Right? And that is that you, you got to kind of shift your mindset a little bit in a number of ways to say, gosh, if I was working to work, if I was willing to work this hard for someone else, shouldn't I be willing to work this hard for me? Right. I right. think if any of you had a corporate job before, they told you what time to show up. They told you what the dress code was. They, you pretty much knew what your role was when you would have a lunch break, how long that lunch break would be. And so there's almost, you have to have kind of like multi-personalities. There's yeah. the, there's the little, you know, parent on your shoulder. That's like, Hey, you know, you need to make a schedule and then stick to your schedule. Um, right. And then right. this, you know, this person's the outgoing, you know, real estate agent that's knowledgeable, that's helping the clients, but there needs to be someone there holding you accountable. And that's why PC is great when you're starting out is because it's kind of that leg up until you get yourself there, you kind of have that self-mastery. Right. Now, um, I'm going to kind of put you on the spot a tiny bit, Michelle. So you, you just referenced that PC is great as a, 
kind of giving giving people a leg up as they're starting out. Yeah. Um, however, you have, um, in addition to your efforts running the productivity committee with ALC, the two of us have been chatting a lot the last couple of weeks um, about introducing some additional um, accountability and coaching into your world. So walk us through why why that's important to you at this stage. Yeah, so I'm really passionate about productivity, guys, because I was there. I was there for 18 months, no closings, nothing in sight. And I feel the pain in the office. Right now, 26% of agents, or I think right now we're around 35% of agents are having business, 65 or not. You know, for me, uh, that doesn't feel like a win-win. It's great to be successful, but when 65% of the people around me are not having success, it doesn't feel so great. And so taking on the leadership role of being in charge of production, I've set forth a goal to increase production in the office by 20% in the next 180 days. And I'm doing that with a committee. I can't do it alone. Um, one of the things I did after productivity coaching was I immediately went into MAPS coaching, which is, you know, done um, at the international level. And then I stopped doing that about five months ago. I just, I, I, they kept switching coaches and whatnot. And so I haven't really had a coach. Aubrey's been my coach since then. But so I've been interviewing a lot of you agents in the office and talking to tenured agents about what could what about those of us that are in the like eight to 30 unit range that need to grow into becoming a team where you know, there's, there's nothing really for us. And so while I wanna see non-producing agents produce, I also wanna see producing agents produce more um, because I know when they produce more, they're gonna be able to give back to the agents who are not yet producing. And so um, we've talked about this for a while, but we are now gonna implement I don't know what we're going to call it, but PC level two. So I'm super excited to be Bill's first signee for productivity coaching level two. And um, even this, just being here with you guys this morning at 830, I miss this. You know, this, yeah. it's, gosh, especially with COVID. I mean, I would be in the office and all of you guys would be there and just your synergy would, would get us kind of fired up, but I'm, I'm excited, Bill, to have this again, whether it be PC level two faces or I don't know, some kind of accountability. Cause I think <laughs> you'll find when you, when you have success in real estate, it's kind of a lonely business. That's it, very true. It, it's yeah. interesting because it's, it's so weird because people all of a sudden there's some people that latch on, but not that many, actually. More often mm -hmm. than not, they're almost afraid to come and hang out with you because maybe some of your success will rub off on them mm -hmm. or it, they can, they'll they feel they'll feel small in, with you, but it doesn't, it shouldn't be that way at all. It's kind of like being a mom. You're a mom and you're like, oh, all my friends are moms and we're all going to hang out. And it's like, no, we're busy being moms. We don't have time to hang out. <laughs> and so with real estate, you're you know, you're, you're always alone. And so having a group or some type of coaching is going to be really exciting. Um, and so I've got a productivity committee of 10 people and we're looking to grow. And my promise to the folks that are on the committee is that really you're going to be learning from me and you're going to have some high accountability and I'm going to pour into you. And then that's going to enable you to go out and pour into others. It's the same model that Aubrey has set forth for us as Agent Leadership Council. He said, look, this isn't about you being on a committee and doing all this, doing a bunch of stuff, you know, ordering food for the team meeting and planning parties. This is about Aubrey pouring into these 10 people, coaching them, teaching us things, holding us accountable. And then like little minions, we can take all of that and, and feed it out to the other agents in the office. So I'm doing the same thing with my productivity committee and anybody that's interested in joining, there's gonna be some high accountability around four key um, things that I believe are the crux to your future success. And um, then it'll be in your charge to go out and, and, and pour back into others, pay it forward if you will. Right, that's awesome. Do you, do you want to share those four things real fast? Give them a few. Yeah. So um, the 411, productivity coaching, reading the Millionaire Real Estate Agent book, 
and having a business plan. Um, what I found interviewing a lot of new agents in the office um, that are asking you know, wonderful questions and I'm so pleased that they do answer, reach out to me and always reach out to me whenever you need help or anyone on the agent leadership council, that's actually our goal, that's our job. Like I heard someone say, you called four agents this weekend for help. Please know that the agent leadership council is supposed to be answering your phone calls too. And all of our phone numbers are always on the calendar. You can always find it in your emails. But um, I got off track there, but uh, <laughs> um, I forgot what I was saying, Bill. I'm sorry. I got you were off saying, track. You were saying um, the, the four on one being, being involved in PC coaching, yep. the reading of the MREA book, and yep. having a business plan. Yep. Um, and then you were saying oh, and that, that, Yeah, and that, um, so, so some of you have called me and they'll, someone will say to me, I can't decide, here's a great example. I can't decide if, if I should farm or if I should send postcards to my database. And what I found as I'm tangling it is they don't even have a business plan and they've never read the Millionaire Real Estate Agent book. And I'm just kind of, blown away because it's definitely the cart before the horse and so I've been taking it back to now when someone calls me and says Michelle I, I have a question what do you think I should do do you think this is my situation and, da, 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 and I'm thinking about farming or should I send postcards to my database the first thing I'm going to ask you is have you read the millionaire real estate agent book because there's no need for me to answer really or there's no need for anyone to have a question unless they've read that book because it's all in there. And that's not to mean I won't help you and that we won't help you, but it's all in there. Well, like that I, is the help, quite honestly. That is the help. And so what I'm saying is we're giving, we're teaching men how to fish and not just giving them the fish. That's right. And that's then right. you then there's so much you can unearth. Um, and then the next question would be, yes, I have read it. Well, do you have a business plan? I've started it. I haven't finished it, blah, blah, blah. Well, if you have a business plan, you're going to know a lot of the answers to these questions. Maybe not perfectly. You're going to always be shifting and changing. And then, of course, the third thing would be, are you writing a 411 every Sunday night and implementing it into your calendar? Because without that, you just you don't have a business. You just don't. You know, everybody knows when you go to Target, it tells you what hours they're open. You pretty much know what services and things they sell. If you don't have a 411, you don't know what your business is. The 411 is, um, it's telling you where you're gonna be, what's important, what you need to be focused on, and then you're gonna take that and dump it into your calendar. Whatever. Right. It's, the, it's accounting. It's the accounting yeah. that is required in order to have a um, accountability. Yeah, and right. so one of the things that we wanna implement going forward, and we discussed this with Aubrey and Robin and Bill, I, I really believe, and it was, it, was a, it was required when I was in productivity coaching that everyone in your productivity coaching should be required to, to write and turn in a 411 every Sunday night along with their calendar. And again, we're all adults, so no one's gonna, you know, call you out and shame you the next day if you haven't turned it in. But I, I believe it's, it should be required because I want so much for all of you to have a successful business. And what I know is that without those things, it would be really tough to do. Right. Right. So we're going to have, um, so I run a class every month for the market center teaching four on one and, and GPS business planning. We've got a bunch of videos in the productivity, uh, YouTube channel as well as links every week in the weekly email. Um, we definitely, um, I'm not prepared at this exact moment to say it is an absolute 100% mandate, but I do wanna let you guys know, um, we are more than happy to take whatever time is necessary to review it, edit it, tweak it, make recommendations and hold you accountable to it if that is what you are um, seeing. Yeah. We're also gonna be, um, uh, I, I'm going to, let me come back to that. Um, okay. Michelle. Yes. One, uh, there was one thing in particular that when we were brainstorming kind of PC2, um, mm -hmm. that I, I said, we got to, got to have this in place. This is probably the feedback that we've gotten most often from our agents. Um, the feedback that we've gotten is, and I know this is a bit challenging with, or excuse me, it has been a little bit challenging with COVID 
is shadowy, right? It's to have some have an opportunity where a top producer can go to a closing, can uh, lead generate in public, can uh, go on appointments, can show property, can you know somebody can like spend a couple hours with with uh, a top producer and just watch the way you run your business, right? What systems do you have? How are you? You know, when somebody says, hey, Michelle, you're my agent, but if, uh, I'm not going to do anything now. Call me in November. Like, what do you do with that information? Because if you blow it, that's an expensive mistake, right? But if you figure out a, a way where that is not slipping through the cracks, no matter what, because you've developed a system that you honor and you pay attention to, then you'll eventually be rewarded, right? So uh, one thing that we want to um, let everyone know, we are going to start to do some shadowing opportunities. Yes. And those are going to be provided by kind of the next level um, PC agents. So Michelle is number one. Um, I've got three or four others that I'm in uh, talks with now. Um, and we'll probably have some form of a um, uh, kind of an organizational system where people know who's doing what at what times. Uh, but everything from appointments to showings to closings to um, uh, watching people lead generate. That is not, by the way, Michelle stands up in the front of the room and makes a call. And then for the next three hours, people ask her questions. Right. That is, you can watch what she's doing because she's working, right? Yeah. And afterwards, there may be a 10 or 20 minute, you know, debriefing session, okay? One other thing that we're going to um, ask of all the PC2 level agents is um, to lead generate publicly once a week in the big room, Right. Um, so if you'd like to hear her call FISBOs or, or, you know, sphere of influence or thank people for coming to the open houses or inviting people to the open houses, whatever you happen to be doing, Michelle, um, people would get an opportunity to see what you do. Um, so it would just be more resources for agents to, to learn and learn in a hands-on way where they don't have to watch a video or something like that. Although watching videos, that's part of seeking out the knowledge. Okay. Well, we're creating a bench. And what's exciting is for you guys are in productivity coaching now, this is a step you're going to get to move towards. And some of you have been shadowing me. And, and I can tell you, I learn as much as you learn. Because so this isn't like, oh, PCs has to give of their time. It's, it's a piece that it's actually benefiting the PC level too as well. That's right. The win -win. Um, we are also, we've got a couple of announcements that will kind of trickle out little by little. Um, for those that do not know this, Candace was, uh, did test positive for COVID over the weekend. Oh, right. um, she's okay, um, but she's not feeling that great right now. So everyone send her a little message and have her in your thoughts. Uh, hopefully she'll be back uh, on the calls here in a, in a couple of days, maybe sooner. Um, and she'll be operating a lot of things um, via Zoom. Uh, while she's in the uh, quarantine. Um, one thing that we are going to do this week again is uh, hold off on the small groups. Small groups, to be quite honest with you, very poorly attended. We're going to scrap that, okay? And what we're going to do is direct all of those agents that are in that zero to three unit range, we're going to direct you to the weekly launch mastermind, okay? The other thing that we're going to do is we're going to set up a series of um, requirements where each week you can earn a one-on-one -on -one with Candace, even if you're, you're in the zero to three. So rather than giving a one-on-one -on -one to everyone, rather than having small groups, which no one was coming to, we're going to have an earn-in system where Candace will have about 10 or 15 slots per week where you can earn in a one-on-one -on -one with her in route to the one-on-ones with me. Is that a question? Mm -mm. Okay. Um, Michelle, anything else we want to add? Um, for anybody who doesn't have a 411, I guess they all have access to what a 411 looks like. I didn't know if you yeah. wanted to show mine at all or. Um, if you are in a place where you're able to show it, um, I could certainly give you showing privileges and, yeah. um, we can talk, uh, offline about, um, you know, uh, teaching an additional class and teaching your yeah. style, but that, that's really fun. Uh, you yeah. have permission to share now. Okay, yeah, I think that's what we're going to be doing is um, I'm teaching my committees how to use the 411 and I'm going to be putting it on a video. So what I can do is just share it 
uh, when once the video is done, Bill, I'll give you the link for you to share out to everybody if that's cool. Yeah, it's absolutely. An instructional video about. Um, sorry, somebody's teaming me. Um, it's going to be an instructional video about how to use it, and then also just know, guys, that I I take my four one one, and that's how I do my calendar blocking. Um, let me grab it for you right quick. Oh no, it's not in there. Sorry. Let me do this. Um, okay. I don't know if you can see this or not. Um, while Michelle's yeah. pulling that up, let me just make one more reminder announcement for today. Um, between 1.30 and 2.30 today um, at the Market Center, we do have a couple slots left um, if you'd like to do this in person. Greta is going to be teaching a class on DocuSign. Uh, to make sure that you know how to set things up, bring documents in, upload documents, um, the system for keeping all of that organized. Greta is going to be teaching that class from 12, I'm sorry, from 1.30 to 2.30 today. And I will have the Zoom room open as well. So you guys can um, tune in live uh, via Zoom if you would prefer. Can I, can I just add, Bill, Greta is absolutely fabulous with DocuSign. I would suggest everyone, if you're not really familiar with DocuSign to take this class. Greta is a, a, a school teacher. So she has a really good way of explaining things that, that stick in your mind that you don't forget, but she's excellent. So I advise everyone who's not familiar with it to jump in on this class today. Awesome, thank you for sharing that. You know, one thing that we're, I wanna make sure you guys are noticing is that we want to help the, the, the people who want to give more, we want to give them the platform to give more, right? So Michelle says, hey, I wanna help people with production. It's super valuable to me that my peers get a chance to bring home money to their families every month. So how do I, get, how do I, make, an how do I make an impact? Okay, well, I gotta sell enough homes to get on the ALC. Then I gotta take it upon myself to recruit a committee. Then I need to huddle with the people that have an influence over production. So Michelle has taken step after step after step to put herself in a place of influence, right? And get, we've, we've now given her and others the platform to share what we are passionate about. Greta, as many of you know, she struggled a lot with DocuSign, okay? Mm -hmm. Like many of us, but she didn't let it get the best of her. She said, hey, I'm gonna figure this thing out. Now she's become passionate about helping make sure that others don't have those struggles. So now we are more than happy to give her a platform, right? So you guys, this is not just about like, asking you to report your numbers because we got nothing better to do. We're, we're, we want to teach you how to become leaders, right? And, and business owners and, and start and, and win and win more often. Make sense? Yeah. So what, are you ready to share or was it working? No, I didn't get it to work. It's okay. Um, okay. Anybody who's curious or wants to see more, you can go to um, Red Diva Realtor Just for Agents on my Facebook page. And I keep a list of books that I've read that I recommend. There's um, sample marketing plans. I mean, everything that I do is an open book and it's all on there. And so I'll post my 411 on there and I'll also post a screenshot of my calendar. Cool. I'm going to add you to all the WhatsApp groups this morning, Michelle. If you could oh. share a couple of those links with everyone, that would be fantastic. Okay, yeah, um, easy peasy. And then don't forget, obviously, guys, uh, this Thursday is Red Day, um, where we close down the office and we go out into the market uh, marketplace and in, into the community and uh, make an impact with a couple of different projects. We're uh, supporting the North Fulton uh, Charities as well as the Foster Care Foundation. So um, look at the newsletter for additional um, information on that, the, the weekly newsletter, I'm sorry, the daily newsletter um, for signups and, and all that kind of stuff. So. Um, let's welcome Michelle Slater aboard. Um, congratulations on uh, your your all of your achievements. Wow, congratulations! What you got a hell of a story, and I hope you share it every single day. And um, I'm excited for uh, your influence to to begin to impact um, more and more of our agents. And um, you guys, I want you to see one more thing, which is if you speak up and you express a goal and something that the program lacks or something that you'd like to see, you yeah. take this very seriously. We, we want to be um, uh, uh, the best resource possible for you as this market shifts. And um, that means we have to be ahead of the shift, 
right? Yeah. And that's what uh, Candace and myself and um, Michelle and others uh, intend to uh, intend to bring to you. So thank you very, very much for the opportunity to be in business together. Michelle, you want to wrap yeah, us up? Two things. I think when um, the, probably the biggest mindset shift you guys is when you start to hear story after story after story of agents who are doing million dollar businesses whose stories start just like mine. You know, you know, I didn't graduate from college. I was going through a divorce. I had filed bankruptcy, but I took the classes, I read the books and I applied myself and now here I am. The Peters Company is a great example. They teach a class called um, Dream Big or Think Big. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so when you start to see those things and then if I could, I just wanna ask the group to give me three things that you learned just from this call that you didn't and that you're gonna implement. Oh, I love that. Who's first? Well, I definitely need to make a habit of doing my 411 every Sunday night. And you intend to do it every Sunday night, right? Of course. Yeah. I, I intend <laughs> to do my 411 every I, Sunday night at yeah. nine o'clock, right? Yeah. I do intend to do it every Sunday night at probably seven o'clock. I Good. love it. Now that's great. And that's all just sometimes just saying it out loud. You'll get you'll get rolling. You might not do it perfectly, but you'll get rolling. Anybody and else? I, anything? And I just made a public commitment. So. There you go. That's even better, right? Michelle, I really liked uh, the way that you uh, basically time block your day, mm -hmm. uh, and that's something that I'm going to try to implement myself. You intend to implement? Yep. <clears throat> I'm going to. I'm, I love it, Michael. So, and I actually, in my marketing plan that I send all of my clients, I, it breaks down my hours. It tells them exactly what I'm doing. Not, not my day-to-day -day calendar, but I lead Jen from nine to 12 and from one to three, I work on the business. And from three to five, I take appointments, look at houses. And I, I tell them I answer texts between one and eight and they can look and see why I don't answer text messages and phone calls in the morning. So this, I'm, I'm telling you, is going to make your life easier because you are teaching them how to treat you. So I love that, Michael. What else? One last thing of what you guys learned today that you're going to implement. I have a question for you. Yes. Do you, do you structure that last part that you said as far as your schedule when you're letting your clients know? Do you structure that into a body of an email? Like, how do you get people to respect your time? To whereas one, they're reading through the full email if it's sometimes, you know, really detailed. To whereas they know the reason that you're not available is because you're actively, you know, working on your business to become better. Like, how do you do that? Yeah. So it's definitely in writing. It's in their marketing plan. Everybody that lists or buy with, buys with me gets a marketing plan, which is kind of a timeline of how everything's going to work. And it's the last page. I tell them who everyone is. This is my student. This is my so-and-so. But here's a question for you. Um... You teach people how to treat you, so you're the you're the example. When you say I don't answer texts before one o'clock, then you better not answer a text before one o'clock because now you're telling them that's a load of crap. So um, that's probably the biggest factor right there. It's uh, not only accountability to yourself, but it's accountability yeah. to everyone that you've shared with. Yeah, um, it's hard. Sometimes it's hard, but. You know, I just, I don't answer texts after eight, you know, I just, because you're just going to go down a rabbit hole. They're going to be 8, 30, 9, 30, 10, 30, midnight. And I say this because I've done it all wrong and then realize like, oh, I can't, I can't last in this business for 15 years doing it that way. Right. I, it's not a life worth living. So that's the key right there is it's not a life worth living. It's not. Yeah. Did that answer your question? Any chance we could yeah. take a look at your marketing yeah. plan? Yeah, it's in the, it's on the, um, it's on my Facebook group. So, so Michelle, I'm going to add Michelle here momentarily to all the WhatsApps and then she, she can share some. Yeah, and I'll today. see that. Yeah. Um, all right, guys, I want to be respectful of everyone's uh, time block for lead generation. I want to um, thank Michelle for spending some time with us this morning. Um, the, I just want to let you know, again, we are corralling all the people that, um, feel passionate about helping you and delivering those resources to you on a daily basis. So um, congratulations, Michelle, on you. all your journey. Um, we are super proud to uh, for you to be uh, kind of agent one in PC2. 
And um, I'm so excited to um, you know, continue to pour into you and to others. So thank you. Yes, thanks guys for having me. And I'm, I'm so proud to see all of you here this morning, bright and early, ready to go. That's thanks, right. Michelle. Yep. Thanks, Bill. We'll see you at 1.30 with thank Greta. You. See you soon. I'll be there. <laughs> thank so, you. Have a good day.